Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you are new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning an equally warm welcome to you too. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you find my videos useful every single week. Um, liking is just a free way to support the channel and it helps the YouTube algorithm and gets the uh, content seen by more and more people. So just, uh, it doesn't cost you anything, just like uh, and subscribe to the channel um, and uh, you know keep up to date with the content, the quality content. And um, just a quick one, our trade process at Trading 180 combines fundamental and technical analysis um, to really decide the best trades. So um, let's get into the um, the week ahead from a, from a news trading perspective. And in the week ahead, we've got. Um, first quarter earnings when it comes to the stock market but elsewhere what we're looking for is flash pmi surveys for the us uk eurozone and japan and australia will be keenly watched that's a producer of manufacturers index um while central banks in the euro area that's good for basically that's 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 a, for, for um, a measure of uh, or contributes to gdp so um we're always looking at um growth and so, uh, and so it says, uh, while central banks in the euro area, China, Indonesia, Canada, and Russia will be deciding on monetary policy. So we're looking at the euro area and Canada. Other key data to follow include US existing and new home sales, UK inflation data and unemployment rate, Eurozone consumer confidence, Japan trade balance and inflation and uh, Australia retail sales and really, um, there's lots of things to kind of focus on when it comes to news and many traders kind of trade um, the news as far as, you know, good news, press buy, uh, uh, bad news, press sell. And that's not really how it works. Really, you have to look at the bigger picture or the way that I do it anyways. I look at the bigger picture. I'm looking at growth. So, for example, GDP, monetary policy, so inflation and interest rates and based on the macro data, um, we're looking for divergences and by divergences I'm looking to trade and buy a currency that is growing um, and obviously uh, hiking interest rates and that is generally positive for a currency and then I'm looking for a sell on a currency that is really kind of lagging behind that, that currency so it's about buying strong, selling weak because that is really what um, uh, uh, why why prices will trend or potentially prices will end up in a range if you're trading too strong or too weak currencies. So um, some interesting news to, to watch out for, especially from, from a monetary policy perspective. So let's uh, see what happens this week. Getting into the fundamentals and technicals and let's look at the Dow Jones uh, uh, dollar index or the DXY I should say. And um, this week has been a bit of a strange one. Uh, the dollar index is a measure of uh, dollar strength um, overall against the basket of currencies. And the reason why I say it's been a bit of a strange one for the dollar, because we've had some really positive news uh, surrounding the dollar. But um, unfortunately, if you've been going dollar long over the past week or so, uh, the dollar has been selling off. And um, uh, you know, we, we, we really had um, more inflation. We had record inflation, matter of fact. So inflation rose more than expected in March and is likely to push up to 4% as price uh, levels um, in a vibrant stimulus fueled economy contrast starkly to those during the lockdown 12 months ago. And um, why that's important is because the closer that the, uh, uh, the central banks reach their target as far as their 2% target, the more likely they are to hike interest rates. Of course, we have to take into account GDP. You don't want to choke off the economy. You don't want to start raising rates and making borrowing more expensive before you've got the economy going. So it's important that we look at the economy and, uh, and I say we, but central banks look at the economy and balance rate hikes um, or potential rate hikes with a growing economy but 
all markers are really going in the right direction for the dollar at the moment. But again, as I was saying this week, um, the dollar has uh, fallen and um, had a lot of uh, analysts kind of scratching their heads. Um, I'm of the belief that uh, it's just a bit more accumulation by the banks, um, nothing to be really concerned about, nothing I wouldn't necessarily get short, and this is not financial advice, but I'm not getting short on the dollar just because it's gone down for you know the week. It just means that um, we can kind of buy, or I can buy the dollar for cheaper, right? If it's a bargain, which I think it is. But here's um, a, a, some analysis, and it was talking about here's why US market rates are falling, and it says a US a US economy littered with super buoyant readings would typically place upward pressure on market rates. So uh, that is clearly not is what happening is what is happening right now. And the question is why? So it goes into a bit of detail, talks about some bond rates, real yields and real yields are just bond rates minus um, inflation. And that is what is called negative, um, negative real yields. But the bond market, um, as long as that tends to yields tend to pick up, but they didn't really do it this um, in the past week. But when once they do, that should be supportive for the dollar. So going back to the uh, the um, the charts, prices have come down actually into a really nice zone. When you get price action like this, that really doesn't kind of pull back. Um, eventually, you do get a pullback, right? So in the same vein where you had this massive move, I say massive, but big move to the upside you get pullbacks because the market moves in waves right you get a move up and you get a pullback you get a move up and you get a deeper pullback right so if you come down into a decent area of demand and if you want to get long on the dollar you wouldn't get long on the dollar index you would look for long trades and this is kind of confluence on other dollar crosses like the dollar yen dollar swiss for example so now we're in a nice demand zone um on the uh, dollar index um, if you're in any kind of demand zones on the uh, dollar swiss and dollar yen and dollar cad etc look for um, you know positive or bullish price action um, as confluence or for confluence on this um, for, for on the dollar index right if you still believe that the uh, the dollar and you want to get short on the dollar um, basically what you're looking for is a pullback into an area of supply and then looking for a short trade but uh, I do think the dollar is um, is basically gone on a bit of a liquidity hunt and liquidity hunts can last for you know um, uh, for anywhere from you know a couple of hours to even a couple of weeks because the the financial institutions have to accumulate and when they're accumulating nobody knows really how much they're accumulating and uh, so as far as prices go to the downside they have to be buyers because they want to buy the dollar for cheap if they believe that prices should be up here which they do and uh, we'll go over you know at least one of the um one of the forecasts from from Citibank, and uh, they kind of forecast a strong dollar. I think dollar to be at least by ninety four within the next um, uh, few months or so. So uh, this is just a buying opportunity for the long term. So uh, let's see what happens with the uh, overall dollar strength. But again, um, this is not financial advice. And if you do want to take advantage of some dollar uh, weakness potentially if there is going to be any then looking for confluence at that supply zone uh, moving on to the uh, dollar yen and the dollar yen again has come down into a nice zone matter of fact um, again a nice demand zone so this is decent for a potential buy if we can get some dollar strength come back into the market in a risk on environment which is basically means that um, investors are looking for a yield everything is okay in the world or, or at least locally then the dollar should really um, uh, strengthen against the Japanese yen uh, at some point as the yen um, is is minus 0.1 on their interest rates and the dollar is uh, positive that's minus 0 0.1 and the dollar is 0.25 so overall what you would want to do is look for um you know to put to buy the dollar right you're borrowing the the, the yen and putting your money into the, the dollar and of course we're going to have pullbacks right you have to have pullbacks the market can't go up every single week doesn't make any sense you know you get profit taking etc and then you get um, just a reload of, uh, of value and this is what demand and supply zones are just value then we go down into a lower time frame for example and then look for um, you know uh, uh, entries on a lower time frame for example the hourly uh, two hourly four hourly etc so that's the way that we uh, 
we look to trade these levels so if you do want to get bullish uh, on you are bullish on the dollar against the Japanese yen then this is actually a really nice area to look for some long trades if you're looking for short trades in a risk off environment meaning there's some fear and uncertainty then you're really looking um, at buying the Japanese yen and that would actually be quite a decent trade to the short side so look for um, look for risk sentiment um, to, uh, uh, to to for, for some sort of confluence and risk off sentiment being you know a, a really major spike in for example um, coronavirus right if if the vaccines aren't working and there's risk off going on and more lockdowns then um, you know we should uh, the, the Japanese yen should want to strengthen so let's see what happens at this point um, interesting uh, um, demand zone at the moment um, and I do think the dollar should want to uh, to strengthen from here but again not financial advice and of course um, uh, please do your own research so uh, moving on to the dollar swiss the dollar swiss has come down to a really nice area matter of fact really nice area i'm actually long on the uh, on the dollar swiss now i uh, was talking to some of the guys in the group and actually created a um a video for the private members in the discord area um, in the discord group and it was yesterday and we were talking about the euro dollar and dollar swiss in-depth fundamental and technical analysis where i go over some setups on here so this is a nice for those of you um that are in the group this is a, a nice cpr zone you can watch the in-depth one on here um um, on on the uh, on the actual uh, Discord group, and a link would be um, in our uh, channels, our private channels. But this is a really nice area around here for a potential uh, buy. I think um, if not, I think pretty much this zone is going to be a decent buy as well. And um, with the Swiss National Bank uh, saying that it will continue uh, currency intervention after US decision. So Switzerland's central bank said it will continue with its policy of foreign exchange intervention while seeking dialogue with the US after Biden administration dropped the country from its list of currency manipulators. And really, um, currency intervention is actually designed to weaken the currency in a trade war because nobody wants an expensive currency um, when you're trying to get out of a recession so with the um, with the Swiss franc actually it's desired for the Swiss franc and the Swiss National Bank for prices to go higher so if they're continuing to intervene then um, that should be supportive of our dollar um, of our dollar Swiss franc trade right now nobody knows whether it's going to you know the exact turning point but eventually we should if it doesn't turn around now and prices you know come down a bit lower it just means that it's a bit more of a bargain to get long and that's just my opinion from a sell trade perspective I think I'm gonna have to kind of delete that uh, demand zone a little bit and uh, looking for a sell trade you've got some supply around there supply zone so you not the strongest supply zone in the world but you want to wait for price to maybe pull back and then look for a bit of a short trade in there but for me my bias is to the long side lots of upside potential my risk rewards when you look at um i guess uh one second when you look at the upside potential if this is an expensive area yeah this is clearly expensive because if it wasn't then prices would have went higher and if this is a bargain area if I'm right about this trade my upside potential this is my pretty much my risk yeah look at my reward really nice risk reward potential so don't mind that at all let's look to see if prices will reverse this week or if the dollar will continue to sell off who knows but uh, um, eventually the dollar will pull back um, it's just a matter of uh, trying to catch when the market agrees with that you know certain prices are a bargain so um so yeah that's pretty much it for the dollar swiss dollar cad um two pretty strong currencies that the, the cad has been the stronger out of the two recently you can see pretty much this downtrend made a major downtrend especially since the beginning of the year so um again more uh uh probably sells but um when it comes to this currency pair i do like this as a buy but i'm not really not interested in this pair because you have two 
kind of competing currencies, two strong currencies. And really what you're looking for is divergence. You're looking for a strong currency versus a weaker currency. And so that's the easier trade. Yes, prices may go to the downside and this may even this trade may even work out, but it's about currency selection and uh, really having the fundamentals you know um, on your side and increasing the probabilities of um, a successful trade technical analysis uh, alone um, for me isn't sufficient so uh, um, but if you do want to trade this currency pair and you do like this zone then that's really nice from a sell trade perspective I think this zone has been touched several times so I'm not really interested in that um, probably a higher level and even that isn't a, the greatest zone in the world I'd probably say anywhere around this um, one two eight um, area so prices would really, really have to kind of pull back to this zone and I'd have to be really bullish on the US dollar for me to get uh, sorry on the Canadian dollar for me to get short but um, I don't think I'm really interested in this currency pair at the moment uh, New Zealand dollar US dollar and again with some dollar weakness US dollar weakness what you've seen really is uh, bullish New Zealand dollar and again I think New Zealand dollar is a buy uh, just not against the US dollar so again you've got two strong currencies a bit of a difficult trade for me fundamentally so I'm not really interested in this currency pair but if you are then a pullback into that demand zone is actually quite nice or potential sell in this area right here and looking for sell trades but um, I'm positive uh, you, um, New Zealand dollars but just not against uh, the US dollar it'd be something like the uh, oh, well, actually, I'm in this um, New Zealand Swiss uh, trade to the upside which has uh, done quite well for me uh, this week so um, and I'm still swing trading that so uh, that's where we're looking for again New Zealand strong Swiss franc sell that's how we look for uh, and that's how we really kind of trade fundamentals and look for uh, where the um, the bargains are on a price chart so let's see uh, what happens but on this currency pair not too keen looking at the pound dollar and the pound dollar again we've got really kind of two competing currencies that the pound um, did have some decent news this week when it came to GDP so UK GDP three takeaways from February's numbers the UK economy remained in the doldrums in February though clearly this won't last for long and the market is more forward thinking uh, we expect a near 5% increase in the second quarter GDP assuming the reopening continues to go to plan so in the UK we have reopened unlike in Europe where you have um, you know um, and other parts where you've got you know continued lockdown uh, meanwhile, the trade situation improved after January's Brexit issues, though it's not going to, it's going to take sorry some time before the economy has finally adapted to the recent changes. So, um, you know, bit 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 bullish on the uh, on the on the pound. But again, do you want to trade it against the dollar? This is this is the, the, the current thing, right? So for me, I'm not really too keen on this currency pair either. But if you are, I would probably say the best area to look for um, some sort of uh, uh, sell trade in the in the medium term. If prices can come up to this one for one area, that for me is a really nice zone, nice fresh area of supply. If you're looking for buy trade, I'd probably say prices to come down beyond that area of uh, demand as it's been kind of used twice. So any anything around the 136 for a potential buy um, in this area. Of course, you've got some um, confluence of uh, support and resistance within that demand zone or um, support in that in that demand zone so that's something that you probably want to potentially uh, look towards if you are looking to buy the British pound against the US dollar moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar again this week a bit bit of a if you were buying uh, the dollar it's probably been a bit of a frustrating week so um, we did get some really positive news but prices have gone to the upside so um, I think again this is more of a liquidity situation where if you don't have enough liquidity to the downside then the market will search for the liquidity to the upside and what I mean by that is if there's a lot of traders going short at areas of supply and you don't have enough buying to facilitate the amount of selling you want to do then there is going to be you know the prices have to look for the liquidity right and if you go short here then your stop loss is what a buy order above the market because you're forced to buy 
at a higher price, which means that you lose. So where's all the liquidity if there's not enough to the downside? If everyone's trying to get short and there's not enough to the downside, then it's going to look for the liquidity to the upside. So right now is a decent area to look for potential short trades if you are looking for a, um, a long on the uh, on the US dollar, looking to buy the US dollar. I think now is a nice area. And if that area doesn't work out, then I think that zone there, the 12049, would be another area to look for any kind of uh, short trades. Um, overall, I think the the ECB it was quite it was was quite quite quiet when it came to um, uh, any kind of European news. And there was uh, some news uh, on, on Bloomberg. It says ECB seen slowing bond buying in July as vaccinations do pick up. So. Um, policymakers meet to discuss monetary stimulus next week, but um, there was nothing really major. Um, uh, Europe, Europe is still behind. I don't think they're even thinking about hiking rates or anything like that, like the, the Federal Reserve is. So any kind of um, short-term um, uh, uh, euro strength, I think, is is actually that. It's going to be short-term, and I think uh, eventually we should want to roll over to some degree so to, to the point where we can make a little bit of money on this uh, currency or I can anyway on this currency pair and um, um, from a from a longer term perspective and a, I guess a bank no, um, a, a financial institution um, forecast Citibank were kind of forecasting um, that they are bearish on the euro right so at one the 121 one area so we're pretty much in that zone right now so 121 one which is just above that zone there of course nothing is 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 perfect um you've got lots of traders who'll be looking at this uh, 1.12 area um um, as as an area to potentially get short so you may see if prices don't reverse now you may see prices actually come up a bit more into this zone and then look for a potential, you know, short trade for, um, and, and then look at your risk reward, right? You've got nice risk there. And then if you're right about this trade, nice and the targets for the, um, for that would be at the 116s, so target levels, um, that would be nice. So again, the six to 12 month forecast, 116s, one to, uh, zero to three month forecast is 118. So if you're at, you know, if you're at 120, you've got at least 200 pips to the um, to the downside for potential and um, yeah um, interesting one of the things that we do in the group is really kind of look for um, uh, bank confluence with our fundamental analysis so um, the euro outlook and they said that they are reluctantly they are reluctant to decidedly shift their bias on the euro dollar downside um, over the medium term. So firstly, the lackluster vaccine deployment in Europe, along with the third wave of COVID cases, infer that lockdowns and restrictions will remain in place until at least the end of the second quarter. So um, pretty much, um, again, you've got a strong currency in, in well, positive data out of the US and still continued potential negative data out of Europe. So we should see prices want to roll over at some point and also as well, the fact that prices haven't pulled back for a good few weeks to any degree, uh, there, there has to be a pullback at some point. Yeah, So let's see if the pullback is enough right now or it, it starts this week for us to potentially make some a uh, little bit of profit on that. Um, moving on to the euro yen. Euro yen. Again, really gone sideways this week. No, and, and for the past few weeks, come up to a nice supply zone. But again, you've got two currencies I think are pretty weak: the euro and the yen. So again, when you get too strong, um, too strong or too weak currencies, this is what tends to happen with price action. It's difficult to kind of tell whether you know the prices will trend. So we've seen a ranging market. If you do want to get short right now, it's okay. I would say there's your opportunity. If you want to get long, then you're looking at this one two nine point three five area for any kind of long trades but not a currency pair i'd be interested in trading aussie dollar um aussie dollar um the australian dollar is probably one of the stronger currencies um if yeah sorry um one of the stronger currencies there are calls for actually an 80 cent um uh, australian dollar us dollar exchange rate so again any kind of pullbacks that would be actually quite nice for a long trade. If you're looking at short trades, I'd probably say you've got some confluence in these areas here where you've got a bit of support and resistance. So right there, 
and you can change that to actually let me change that to gold it's a bit of resistance within that uh, su supply zone so that's probably where if I was looking at short trades that would be where I'd be looking for the short trade the first short trade in that area that um, 0 0.78 put about the round number and up to the uh, 0 0.782 up to the top um, and the half number um, but again not really a currency pair I'm really interested in because again you've got two competing currencies two strong currencies even though your Australian dollar is probably going to do um, a bit better than the, uh, the dollar moving on to the um, the Australian dollar Japanese yen and again from risk off uh, sorry a risk on perspective we did get a bit of a pullback this week and then a nice opportunity to get long let's see how far this can go um, didn't get an entry on this but uh, if prices do come back a bit further that's where I want to be a buyer um, I like that area um, uh, this 82 uh, 50 to 82 round number for a buy but let's see um, buying right now doesn't really make any sense because you're buying in a, in a more of an expensive area but let's see um, but again if you do want to get short on the uh, Aussie yen I think this zone here this 85 round number and above is really nice for a short trade but just make sure that risk sentiment is off yeah before looking to get uh, short so that adds confluence to your uh, short trade and finally looking at gold and gold has been on a bit of a run this week out of over the past few weeks um, again some dollar weakness uh, this week from a price perspective has the effect of um, a dollar bit of a dollar run so that becomes now demand but um overall I'm still a bit bullish on the dollar so um, for me this would be a uh, if I was looking to short gold that would be a really nice area to look for for any kind of short trades if the dollar can um, reverse its um, its its weaker um, or recent weaker price action um, and then if you do want to be a buyer of gold then you're looking for that area being uh, a nice area of demand if not then move down into that zone there now um, I'm not really too keen on this second touches of a level are fine the first touch of a demand zone is always the best area that is you know a nice fresh area of demand so that was a really nice trade he managed to get involved in that a few weeks ago but um, I do think that this should want to possibly sell off but again it depends on uh, bond yields risk sentiment and also you know what happens with the dollar but with the positive dollar news who knows it could happen this week could happen over the next week but fundamentally um, I'm personally looking to buy the dollar until something changes anyways guys that's pretty much it for this week hope you enjoyed it if you are looking to join the private discord room in fact I've changed the um, enrollment date it's not going to be on uh, Sunday the 18th it'll be Monday the um, the 19th yeah Monday the 19th um, is when I'm going to be opening enrollment apologies for the delays I know a lot of you are, are uh, looking uh, quite eager and, and anticipating the opening but it'll be Monday the 19th uh, before you get the opportunity and it will be for a limited time it will run until as far as the opening the enrollment will be open until the end of April and then I'm going to close it again for the foreseeable future so take the opportunity to work with me if you want to understand not only supply and demand strategies but really how to trade um, and apply fundamental analysis with your trading and uh, guys take care and uh, if you are um, looking to join I look forward to working with you and uh, I'll speak to you soon until the next video have a great trading week and take care